Now, if I was using the whole subject, it would read, Enlargement and deliverance arise through the Jews from another place. But just to cut it short, we're going to say enlargement from another place. I want to just give you a couple of words about what the subject means and then we're going to go back. First, we'll talk about another place. Now that's simple. Everybody know another place is another place other than the one you're looking at or one you're at. The word enlargement and deliverance that means God will magnify, God will call into existence, God will ordain something else from another place. If he cannot work with this place, he'll work it out another place. Now to bring that down closer to you, it means this. That if God can't let the Holy Ghost work inside of you, if God can't let his will work inside of you, then he'll leave that place, he'll leave that person, and then he'll go and pick somebody else up in another place, and then he'll work. See, that's kind of serious. Do you you, 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 you kind of get my point now? You, you see which way I'm going? Now, now, I, I, I want to give you a couple examples of it. Do y'all know who God intended that his throne be after, that the kingship be after? Do y'all know the man that God intended that the whole throne, the whole kingship of Israel would be after? It was not David. Anybody know who it was? It was Saul. But what did God do with Saul? He took Saul down, put another man up. David got a job that wasn't meant for him. It was meant for Saul. Saul messed up. God took Saul down, raised up another man, and forgot about Saul. Now Saul ain't even hardly mentioned. It's David. All through the Bible now, the Bible is saying that the Lord going to order the kingdom after that of David. Order the kingdom of Christ after that of David. Now Saul is forgotten. In the Bible, another example, there was a man by the name of Eli. God had promised him that his house and his family would be the priest forever. Eli let his two sons mess it up. He wouldn't chastise him. He wouldn't do right. The Lord came and told him that he had promised him that the priesthood would be in his house forever. Now the Lord said, it's not so no more. I will honor them that honors me. And the Lord took the priesthood from the house of Eli. God gave that priesthood to somebody else. Do you see which way God works? I'm going to give you one more example. There was a time that a multitude of people were worshiping the Lord our Savior. They were laying their coats down. They were laying palms down. And they were praising the Lord as he was entering into Jerusalem. Somebody said, make them shut up. Make them hush. You know what the Lord said? He said, of these, hold their peace. God would cause the stones to cry out, but they wouldn't get their blessing. Praise the Lord. And I want to say this too. It ain't no such thing that God ain't going to have a church. Okay, I may not be in it. You may not be in it. Baltimore may not be a part of the whole church. 
I can backslide and go to hell. You can backslide and go to hell. You and I can close down this tent and close down revival and go home and forget about God. Ain't that right? But that don't mean that God not going to have a church. You know what he said? He said, upon this rock, and it wasn't no Peter either. He's talking about himself. He said, upon this rock, I build my church. And you know what he said, Father? He said, the gates of hell, they can't prevail. They will not. They are not able to. I won't let them prevail against my church. My church is going to go on and on and on. Praise the Lord. So basically what I'm telling you today is that God going to be a winner. The church is going to be a winner. But it's left up to you where you want to be a part of the winning organization. The devil is going down. Sin and deceit is going down. All the vileness of the world is going down. All lust is going down. But God's word is going to last forever. The heavens going to pass away. The earth going to pass away. But the word of God is going to last forever. And as I preach this message, I got to preach it like it is. Yes, we have for you to know it. God don't need me to get his job done. He can use me, and he would be most delighted to have me. But in this case, one monkey don't stop no show. It ain't but one monkey who can stop the show. And that would have to be referred to God. Ain't that right? And we don't call him no monkey, but I just use that term. But God is the only one who can stop the show. Ain't that right? I am not important. You are not important. And our serving God is not so much for God. Our serving God is for ourselves. Do you know that most of us feel like we are doing God a favor when we serve the Lord? Just like some of you done come in this morning. You doing your mama. She been begging you and asking you all the time. So you just came to church because you was want to satisfy her. Let me get her off my back. That's not the reason why you come to church for mama. You ain't coming to church for your sister or your brother. You're running for your life. And every man that do not take up his cross and follow after the Lord, he will regret it. He will be whooped. My friend, that's the reason why I have such a burden for souls. I've read the Bible through and through. And I got a glimpse of what it would mean for people who don't serve the Lord. It's pathetic. It's miserable. That's right, what would happen to them. People don't believe it. But because they don't believe it, it does not make it not happen. A lot of people didn't believe that an airplane could fly before it ever flew. They didn't believe that nothing could get up in the air and fly. But the airplanes are flying every day. There's a lot of things people don't believe. But your belief in something don't make it void. You don't take nothing from God because you don't believe God. God's word and God's plan is going to prevail. Now I want to go now into this message. And we'll ask Sister Crump if she will stay on hand by the mic in case we need some verses read. Praise the Lord. But we want to go now <clears throat> into the book of Esther and such out what it's all about. The book of Esther... starts off in the first chapter and it's talking about a king and the name of the king is Ahasuerus this king is a evil king he's ungodly 
Not a man of God. He cares nothing about God. Ready the way he got his authority? He got his authority because the people of God didn't do what was right. It started out a long time ago with a man before him, by the, a man by the name of Nebuchadnezzar. God had set Jerusalem up, and Jerusalem was doing good. Had given Jerusalem a city. They was whooping, they had whooped every nation around them. God himself lived in the temple in Jerusalem. Solomon had built God a temple. And God stayed there. He dwelt right over the altar, right over the mercy seat. Two cherubims, they would put their wings like that from each side. The people thought they had it made. Here God is in the temple. Jerusalem is strong. We done whooped every nation. God is blessing. They thought they had it made. And the people let God down. I want to tell you this morning, you ain't never got it made when you're serving the Lord. That's right. You got to, you got to keep your prayer life up. You got to keep your dedication up. Let me tell you this. When you serve the Lord, there is never a dying hill when you're serving God. I want you to get that. There ain't never no dying hill when you're serving the Lord. Serving the Lord is always climbing. It's always a struggle to serve the Lord. You always got to put up a fight to serve the Lord. You always got to make an effort to serve the Lord. Let me tell you something else. You can never serve God on the faith that you had yesterday. Serving the Lord today must be faith of the day. Your faith has got to be renewed day by day to serve the Lord. That's the reason why a lot of people start out on their journey. It ain't long before they quit. They start coasting. They start sitting down. Worst thing you can ever do is to relax when you serve the Lord. When you're serving the Lord, you're out on the battlefield. When any time you relax, the enemy go slip upon you. You got an enemy out there, the devil. That devil never sleeps. He's always following you. He's always stalking you. He's all, even though you're out there strong, he's back in the bushes someplace. Laying down low. He can't rise out the bushes now. You're too strong for him. But he just watch you and stalk you. Just stay behind the trees. Stay behind the bushes. And he'll wait until you get weak. He'll wait until you get tired. He'll wait until somebody doesn't let you down. He'll wait till the golden opportunity. And that's when he'll move in with all four and leap on you. And devour you if you don't stay on the watch. And that's what's happened to the saints these days. They are not watching. They are not alert. They're not acting like a soldier. Let me tell you this about a soldier. When you put a soldier out on the battlefield, a soldier is alert. For he knows that if he is not alert, he loses his life. So therefore, in the wee hours of the night, he's, he sleeps with one eye open and the other one closed. Any little noise he hear, he jumps. He have his rifle, he have his weapon right by his side, and he's ready. If he don't do like that, he's a dead duck. That's right, he's a dead duck. Because he got an enemy, and the enemy, he works at night. The enemy works at night more than he works in the day. And the devil works at night more than he works in the day. That's when the greatest crimes take place. That's when the greatest murders take place. That's when the greatest thefts take place. The devil, he up his gear into high gear at night. And he cools it down just a little bit in the day. But he ain't stopped in the day. Sometimes he'll rob you in that broad open daylight. But he'll do even more in the nighttime. And thanks if you're not going to be watchful. If you're not going to be alert, you just want to forget it. Some people think they can just pray. And that's all it is to it. But the Bible thing, Bible that told you to pray, it said, watch. Watch as well as pray. You got to put the watching and the praying together. You got to put all of it together in order to make it. Praise the Lord. But getting on back to this king, he was the evil king. And getting back to Jerusalem, Jerusalem let God down. When Jerusalem let God down, God sent another man by the name of Nebuchadnezzar. 
Nebuchadnezzar burned Jerusalem all the way down to the ground because God stepped out it and God sent an evil king to burn down the holy city of Jerusalem. Did you know that God will leave the church? I want to go a little slow. God's power and God's presence will step back from the church. God will shake up old sinner and say, go over there and burn the church to the ground. God will do that. He has done that. He's done that several times. He'll do it again. Because God will let a sinner whoop the church and chastise the church. If the church won't do right. That's the reason we, we got to do right. We can't, we can't ride on our last year goodness. Even this tent right here, we can't ride on last year's tent. This tent got to go for itself. Every message that we preach, we got to preach that message for itself. Never can I fall back on yesterday's message or last, na- year, last year's message. Never can I fall back on the life I lived yesterday. It's the life I lived today that really counts. Praise the Lord. It's what we do right now that counts. So God sent this king, Nebuchadnezzar, there and burned Jerusalem to the ground. Then out of king, out of Nebuchadnezzar, there came after a while this king that I'm talking about today, Ahasuerus. He rose up and he got the, he got the kingship of Babylon of the Medes and of the Persians. He got all of that authority that Nebuchadnezzar had. At this time he ruled from all the way from India to Ethiopia. Very powerful king. And he has 120 provinces. Very large. And to make that clear to you, the United States only have four, four, uh, 50 states now. When I was a child they had 48, but 50 states now. And this man had 120 of them. Better than twice what the United States got. All the way from uh, India to Ethiopia. Very powerful province. This evil king decided one day he was going to have a feast of 180 days. And then in this 180 day feast, only sudden privileged ones came to the feast. Like his nobles, like his princess. Then at the end of the 120 day feast, he had a seven day feast. On the seven day feast, he let everybody come, even the low people, the common people. The seven day feast at the end of the 180 day feast was the main feast. Because that ended all up. This king decided at the end of the feast, when everybody's all high and on wine that he would pull out the very best he had. He had already brought out his gold. He had already brought out his silver. He had hanging things of different colors. And the last thing he figured he would bring out to this play was his beautiful wife. The name of his wife was Vestai. Vestai refused to come out and be displayed and to be shown. That made this king very evil, made him mad. He had a meeting with his high dignitaries, asked them what should we do with the queen. They decided that we would take her down, for if she did not obey her husband, that would cause the other wives throughout the kingdom not to obey. Then they came up with another suggestion. In order to replace Vestai, they decided that the whole nation would be such. And the most beautiful woman throughout the province would be the king's queen. And you know the story? After the such, they find a very beautiful young girl. She was a Jewish girl. She was a cousin to Mordecai. She was Mordecai's uncle's child. Mordecai's uncle died while the child was very small. Her mother died and left a little beautiful child. Mordecai was a very dedicated man. 
He's a man that loves the Lord. Mordecai took Esther from a little teeny child and Mordecai reared that child. Now all of this was in Jerusalem where he reared that child. Then when Nebuchadnezzar came in and captured Jerusalem, Mordecai and Esther and all of the Jews were taken into Babylon. And now the Medes and the Persians, they have rose up and they have taken the kingdom from the Babylons. Now the Medes and the Persians are in power. The such was put on and they found Esther. And they brought Esther to be the queen's wife. Now just take us now down into the story. This will take us all the way to the third chapter of the book of Esther. And I want to tell you just a little bit of the third chapter and then we'll get Sister Crump to start reading for us when we get to the fourth chapter. The third chapter describes that there was another man that came on the scene and this man's name was Haman. And in fact, we're going to get Sister Crump to start in this third chapter because some things in this third chapter are so important that the church need to hear it. So Sister Crump, I'm going to get you to start in the third chapter because I want this congregation to know about Haman and what really happened. I want you to listen to it carefully. So Sister Crump, you may start reading the third chapter. After these things did King Ahasuerus after these things the king Ahasuerus promote Haman the son of Hamanada the, the king the king promoted and gave Haman a promotion now Haman is a wicked man very very wicked and the king gave him a promotion read on and advanced him and set his seat over all the princes that were with him and gave him the high authority he's over everybody read on and all the king's servants that were in the king's gate. And all the servants that was in the king's gate. Bowed and reverenced Haman. They had to bow down. Every time they see him coming, they had to go to the ground. They had to duck. They had to reverence him. They had to treat him like a god. He loved that. He ate that up. Read on. For the king had so commanded concerning him. For the king had commanded. That's the way it had to be. You had to die if you didn't do that. But Mordecai bowed not. Now, this is the point I want to get to you. Mordecai wouldn't bow. Nor did him reverence. And wouldn't do him no reverence. And I want to take a little time to bring this out. Mordecai is the man of the book of Esther. Mordecai is the star in that book. Esther is not the main star. It's Mordecai. Even though the book is named after Esther, but Mordecai... It's the backbone. Mordecai is the one that stood and stood up for something. I tell you, if I have to choose which one I'd rather be like, Mordecai, Esther, I'd pick Mordecai. Now I want to work with Mordecai just a little bit. Mordecai had come out of Jerusalem. Mordecai had been taught that there was one God. Mordecai had been taught that the Lord was a jealous God. Mordecai had been told that he must never bow down before any other man or any image or any God. He was told that in Jerusalem. Now he's taken out of Jerusalem and taken over there in Babylon, but he carried his convictions along with him. Amen. There's some of us that leave one place, leave out all our convictions. Some of our young fellows, they're taught up in the church. They're taught the right way in the church. Now their army calls them. They leave their church convictions at home and go to the army and let down every standard that they've ever been taught. But a real child of God, he'll live right in the church. He'll live right outside the church. He'll live right in the church and he'll live right in the school. He'll live right in the church and he'll live right when he get out in the streets. 
A real child of God will not stop his lifestyle because of the sin. A lot of people got lizard religion. Y'all know what a lizard do? A lizard finds out that it's more, it's better for him to change. If he on a black leaf, he turns real dark. If he on a red leaf, he turns real red. If he on a yellow leaf, he turns yellow. Whatever leaf he get on, that's the kind he turns so you can't see him. That's right. He turned whatever he owned. That's the way he blends. That's the way some people are. When they go to one church, and everybody else in that church wearing earrings and beads, they wear earrings and beads. They come to another church that don't wear them, they take them off. They leave that church and they go to another and wear pants, and they wear pants. They go to another that they don't wear pants, and they take the pants off. You ain't nothing but a lizard. You change with the wind. You ain't got no backbone. You ain't got no determination. You ain't got no constitution. You ain't nothing but a weak jelly bag. God can't use no weak jelly bags. You got to be what you is. Ain't that right? If you's a dog, be a good dog. If you's a cat, be a good cat. If you's a holy man, be a good holy man. Be what you is. Ain't that right? Praise the Lord. Mordecai was a man who stood for what he believed. That's the reason I admire him. The man had a backbone. The man believed in God. He stood for what he believed. I, I, I wish I could find a church group of people that would stand for what they believe. So many people, they duck behind the tree and act one way. And they come out here and act another way. You can't work with nobody. Who act one way in the front of you, another way behind your back. There's a group of people, when they get in the crowd, they'll do good if you got them up here by themselves. But when they get in the crowd, they just get back there and ride on the crowd. Some people get on the choir. As long as everybody else is singing, they just move their lips to fool everybody. They ain't putting out nothing. That's right. There are people that would get up here in the crowd, we were taking up an offering. And they act like they're going to put 5 or $10. When they get in the crowd, they just ease a nickel. They five, put that 5 or $10 right on back. It ain't no good. Praise the Lord. You're serving the Lord and not man. There are people that will look out on the crowd. And there's a big crowd out there today. I ain't got to give them no money because all these people are going to give. Don't you know that God register you individually? And I don't care if there's a, right now, uh, this Sunday morning, all over the world, there's millions of people giving to God. But ain't a one of them giving for Brother Crump. I got to still give for myself. Suppose I looked out in the world and I said, look at all them people praying. Look at, all that, look at God getting glory. I ain't got to give God nothing because he's getting it from all them people. That ain't doing a thing for me. Ain't that right? That ain't doing a thing for me. I got to work this thing out for myself. I got to give for myself. I got to praise God for myself. Can't nobody else give for me. Can't nobody else praise God for me. Ain't that right? That's the reason why a lot of people lose their blessings. They waiting on somebody else to do it. Praise the Lord. So Mordecai was a real man. When everybody else bowed down, Mordecai stood up tall. And I wished I could find people that is not cried orientated. Back in the early 60s, we found out how the young people were. Somebody would say, somebody would get up and say, Get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. And everybody would go get their gun. Somebody would say, Come on, let's march, let's march. And our young people would say, Let's march, let's march. Somebody would say, Let's sit, let's sit. They'd sit, all of them would sit. They pulled them people, they pulled our young people away from the schools. They pulled them away from their parents. And the young people got in the mob, they got in the crowd. They didn't know what they was doing, but they just running. Just running. And after a while, that thing, it pickled on out. Ain't that right? They ain't sitting down in no counties now. They ain't getting no guns now. If that thing was real back in the 60s, it would be real right now. If that thing would have had any meaning, it would have been real right now. But it pickled right on out. It wasn't of God. It was of men that had ambition, men that had a zeal, men that had a charisma about them, men that had a voice, and they could talk, and they could whip people up. And the people, the young people didn't have no backbone, and they just got with the crowd. Those who got a backbone, they would have said, this ain't God, this ain't God, and step back at it. The majority of the people today can be whipped up with the crowd. They don't really do no thinking, they let somebody else do the thinking for them. 
Praise the Lord. The only thing that's right is the Word of God and any other thing, any other philosophy. Anybody else come along, anything contrary to the Word of God, it will not last. So what they were doing in the 60s, it's gone now. It's unheard of now. Some of them had to go to Paris. Some of them had to go out the country. Some of them changed. That's right. Some of them, they done stopped preaching what they were preaching, and now they done said, you got to work with the system. They done come back in, but the Bible ain't changed. The same gospel we preached in the 60s, they preached in the 50s. They preached in the 40s. And it's still good today. It was good yesterday. It's good today. The Bible never changes. Everything else is going down, but the Word of God it is going to stay rising high. Mordecai was a man that had a backbone. I wonder how many Mordecais that we have in the building today. I wonder how many of y'all got a backbone. I wonder how many of y'all, if, if, if all the rest of us in here backslide, I wonder how many of y'all would stand up and say, I can't help it if Brother Crump backsliding. I can't help it if Ella Hankin backslide. I can't help it if Brother Sullivan backslide. I can't help it if the choir backslide. I'm going to serve God anyway. A lot of y'all would backslide if the rest of us backslide. You ain't no good. Backslide if I backslide. I ain't no good if I backslide if you backslide. Ain't that right? A lot of y'all done backslid. I told your husband done backslid. He done got him a woman. You say, I got to get me a, I got to get me a man since he done got a woman. He going out every Friday night and going to the, uh, going to the disco. I'm, I'm going to do it too. I got to get him back. You don't backslide cause nobody else backslide. You live in the God all for yourself. And I'm going to tell you, walking with the Lord is a lonely journey. Walking with the Lord is just you and the Lord. Even though we got the whole church, but when it come to, when it really come down to real duty, it's just you and Jesus. That's right. Everybody else around you, but it's just me and Jesus. Hallelujah. And everybody, it gets down to, it boggles down to just you and the Lord. Ain't that right? Every tub got to stand on his own body. The day you're going to be tested, there's going to be a day that nobody ain't going to be with you. You're going to be all alone. And the devil going to whisper in your ear. And you got to make up your mind. Every, the devil going to say, the opportunity is right. The field is right. Everything is set. Nobody won't know it. You can get so much money, you can get so much opportunity. If you just do this, it's so easy. You got to say, yes, devil, I know I can get it. Yes, devil, I know the opportunity is there, but I will not do it. Yes, devil, I know nobody don't know about it, but I will not do it. Because God who sits high looks down low. God know everything, and devil, I will not do it. You got to have that kind of constitution. You got to have that kind of mind. You got to have that kind of determination. Some of us got that kind of mind. Praise the Lord. Mordecai was a man who had that kind of determination. When everybody else got down on their knees, got down on their stomach, kneeled down and bowed down, Mordecai was the only man in Shushim that was standing up tall. Everybody else done up. Here's a man of God got enough backbone. He got enough guts. He got enough love for God to keep on standing high when everybody else is on the ground. It takes strength to do that. But Mordecai did it. Read on, Sister Crumb. Then the, then the king's servants, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai. Then they down the ground now, and they, they were down the ground. They looking up from the ground, because they scared to stand up. They said, they looked from the ground, they looked up at Mordecai, and they said, Why transgressest thou the king's commandment? Uh huh, read on. Now it came to pass when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them. When they spake daily unto Mordecai, and Mordecai wouldn't listen to them. They said to Mordecai, why do we have to buy it on, and you don't? Don't you know the king made a law? Don't you know the king made a rule? If you, we got to buy it on, you got to buy it on. You ain't no better than us. Why don't you get on down here in this dirt with us? We down here in this dirt. Come on down here in this dirt with us. That's what the sinner wants you to do. The sinner wants to wear splits, and he wants you to put on the splits with him. The sinner wants to put on a pant, and she wants you to put on a pant, your pant. The sinner wants to go to the disco, and they want you to do it. The sinner wants to drink some liquor, and they want you to drink some liquor. They want to go out and let their hair down, and they want you to do it. And they'll say, oh, it ain't going to hurt you, just a little bit of it. God understand. God know you're human. But if you're a real child of God, you will not let the devil make you be in. Read on, Sister Crump. 
that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters then would they stand. told Haman to see if Mordecai's matter would stand for he had told them that he was a Jew for he had told them that he had conviction he told them that he served the Lord God he told them that God didn't allow that he told them that he must stand up for God he told them that he was a Jew read on and when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not when Haman saw that Mordecai wouldn't let down wouldn't stop serving his God nor did him reverence. Wouldn't do him reverence, but he done the Lord God reverence. Then was Haman full of wrath. Then Haman got very angry. And he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone. And Haman thought it terribly to just kill Mordecai by himself. The, well, the devil stepped inside of Haman, and the devil said, Don't kill him by himself. Kill out every Jew. Now hear what the devil had in mind. The devil knew that the Jews were the only one who made up the church. The devil knew that if he killed every Jew, he would have the church. The Gentiles then had not come in. And the devil knew that if he killed every Jew, he had put the church to silence. That could not be. But the devil tried it. The devil wants to destroy the church. So he didn't want us to kill Mordecai. Haman had the authority to kill Mordecai if he so chose. But the devil said, don't get Mordecai by himself. Kill the whole church. Read on, Sister Crumb. For they had shown him the people of Mordecai. For they had shown him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus. Uh-huh. Even the people of Mordecai. So Haman started the motion. He paid a large sum of money. To get rid of all the Jews. In fact, he paid 10,000 talents of silver. And he promised that all of it be put in the king's treasure. What, the, what Haman did, he got male men to carry throughout the whole 120 provinces. Publish it and, pros, and, and publicize it. That every Jew had to die. Sister Crump, I want you to read that 13th verse in the third chapter so that they can hear it. And the letters were sent by post. And the letters were sent by the mailman. That's the post. That's the mailman. Into all the king's provinces. That means all over. From India, all the way from India to Ethiopia. To destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews. Kill both, all Jews. Both young and old. Kill the young Jews. Kill the old Jews. Little children. Kill the little children. And women. Kill the women. In one day. And don't take no day and a half doing it. Everybody got to die in one day. If the whole church must perish in one day. The, the, the way the laws was of the Persians and the Medes, once a law was put into law, it could not be altered. It could not be changed. The only way you could do hella, a meat and a Persian law, if you make one law, you got to make another law. But both laws existed. So they made a law that every Jew would die. And they picked a day, they picked the 13th day of Adair. All right, Sister Crump, we're going to start now in the fourth chapter. You may start. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, when Mordecai understood what Haman had done, Mordecai. Mordecai understood that the church was getting ready to die in one day. Mordecai realized that the church of God, the people of God, the holy people, those that God loved, the apple of God's eye, was getting ready to perish in one day. That's what he realized. Read on. Now at this time, Esther... She's back there with the cane, just being pretty. But she ain't got this burden. Mordecai is out there with the people. Esther is in there with all the rest of the beautiful women. Read on, Father. Mordecai rent his clothes. Mordecai rent his clothes. And put on sackcloth with ashes. Mordecai put on sackcloth and he put on ashes. And went out into the midst of the city. And Mordecai went out into the midst of the city. And cried, with, and cried with a loud and a bitter cry. Now, a real man don't, ain't no cry baby. He don't cry over everything. But when you bother the church, it'll bring tears out of any man of God, any woman of God, 
when they see that the church is not prospering, when they see that the church is not bursting in souls, when they see the revival is not going on, when they see the devil is getting up a hand on the church, it'll bring tears from any man of God's eyes, from any woman of God's eyes. Mordecai had a burden for the church. Mordecai had a burden for the Lord. Mordecai had a burden for God's people. And Mordecai saw the devil getting God's people, and it brought tears from his eyes. Read on, Father of the Crown. And came even before the king's gate. And came near before the king's gate. For none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. It was the law that nobody couldn't go before the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province. And in every province. Whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came. Uh huh. There was great mourning among the Jews. There was great mourning among the Jews for the church. And uh, fasting and weeping and wailing. You see, that's what God's people got to do. And I want, I want to take time to bring out. God don't never move in a mighty way until they're fasting and praying and weeping and mourning and wailing. We will never have a, a Zusa Street revival in Baltimore Amen. until people learn how to fast and pray and weep and moan and wail. We will not have a revival coming to church when we get ready. Going home when we get ready. A lot of time in our revivals, you can tell the people are not ready to dedicate it. They come out to church any hour. And they go home any hour. They will not get behind the revival and support it financially. Yet we are looking to, we are looking to tear Satan's kingdom down and build the Lord's kingdom. Ain't nobody never did it yet without fasting and praying and weeping and mourning. That's the only way you can build a kingdom. Friends, we can do something here in Baltimore, Amen. but the price got to be paid. Amen. And as of right now, as of this hour, we are not quite ready. We are not ready to pay that price that it takes to build a kingdom. And let me tell you this, every man going to be responsible. Every man going to suffer if he does not pay that price. I preach this a sermon, and this sermon is called, Are You Marked? While I preach this sermon, the scriptures bring out that God had five angels, five men. He said to the majority, all of them except one, he said, go through the city. Mark. Don't mark nobody who ain't sincere. Don't mark nobody who come to church late. Don't mark nobody who won't clap their hands. Don't mark nobody who won't praise me. Don't mark nobody who don't have no burden. But mark every man and every woman that's got a burden for souls. Mark every man and every woman that loves revival. Mark every man and every woman that loves to pray. Mark them that don't mind fasting. Mark them that don't mind weeping. Do y'all know right now, there's an angel going through this tent, going through this world, going through the city. And that angel's marching, marking everybody who's sincere and dedicated. He will get the one person, he'll see the dedication, he'll see the love, and he'll mark them. He'll get to another person, they, they just have to go lucky. They don't care where we have revival, they don't care where they get out, he'll pay them. There's another person, he, 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 that person there, he'll say, I'm sleepy, I'm tired, and I ain't going out there and kill myself. The angel will pay somebody. There's another person that he'll say, the Lord renew my strength. I'm going tonight, God go get me strength. The angel will mark that person. Y'all may not believe I'm telling y'all the truth. But the angel right now is marking those that are dedicated. Marking those that are sincere. And I'm going to tell you this. I believe without a shot of a doubt we're going to have revival. I, I, I don't know whether it's going to be under this tent or not. But I, I, I believe a revival is coming on the land. I'm going to tell you the reason why I believe a revival is coming on the land. Sin is on the increase. Murder is higher than it ever been before. There are more abortions now than we ever had in history. Marriages are breaking up all around the world. Babies are being born out of wedlock like never before. 
They're coming out with new dopes every day. Sin is on the increase. But I look back to the Bible. I know what the Bible says? Where sin does abound, grace does much more abound. God got to give a revival to abound higher than all the sin. Right now, whether y'all know it or not, but there are some cities. It's already moving into revival. God not going to save by churches. God going to save by cities. We're going to have a revival where a whole city is in revival. A whole nation is in revival. We're going to have a revival where their clothes go, where, they, where, they, where the business is going to close down. And everything going to be geared up to bring the people to one scene to have revival. Amen. But ain't nobody going to have a part of that revival except the dedicated. They're sincere. Those that don't have a burden for revival, they're going to die and go to a devil's hell. Friends, you got to get with it or you're going to be left behind. Right. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to tell you this, it's later than you think. I tell you, it's later than you think. God is getting ready to bring this world into judgment. What are we going to do? we got to hurry up and do it. We ain't got much time. Ain't that right? That's the reason why we got under this red and white gospel tent. Cry out loud. Spare not. The tent ought to be filled. Everybody, everybody ought to be bringing somebody. Everybody ought to be tied up and wrapped up in getting a soul. We shouldn't be willing to sleep at night until we're done witnessing some soul. I tell you, people, if people had a burden, if people had a dedication, it would change things. Ain't that right? Amen. You see, when the saints get on fire, the world will come to see you burn. Oh, yeah. There's something about fire. You can't burn a house down without getting the crowd. Ain't nobody never burn the house down without getting the crowd. If that house start burning down over here, y'all will kick your eyes on me and you'll watch fire. It's something about fire that makes you watch it. If God ever sits you on a Holy Ghost fire, people will watch you burn. The reason why we don't have the tent filled because the saints is not on fire. The saints is not ready for revival. The saints are not dedicated for revival. The saints are standing in the way of the sinner. The saints are the only people in the world that can hold back revival. Revival do not start from sinners. Revival started the church and it spreads on to the sinners. That's right. When the gospel is not being preached, it's not the sinner's fault. It's the church's fault. When the prayer meeting is not going on, it's not the sinner's fault. It's the church's fault. And God go judge the church. The Bible says judgment go start at the house of God. That's where it's got to start because that's where the gift of place is at. Praise the Lord. There's no reason why we shouldn't have revival. There's no reason why a hundred or two hundred souls shouldn't be getting saved every night. There's no reason why you shouldn't be bringing eight or ten people. You walking eight or ten people on your side, bringing them on to the church. Ain't that right? I tell that story and I'll I tell it again. It's not a story, it's a reality. And I want to tell it to y'all again. Praise the Lord. I want y'all to listen to it. In a little while, the judgment seat is going to set. God himself is going to sit right there on the judgment seat. Christ is going to be on the right side of him. God is going to give authority to Jesus to judge the world. All of a sudden, they're going to be in line coming up to get their rewards. It could be that you could be standing behind a man that lived some like 2,000 years ago. His name is Paul. When Paul get up there to the Lord, the Lord would say to Paul, Paul report. Report what you did for me during your lifetime. Report your faith and report your prayers. Report how many times you were whipped. Report how many times you were scarred. Paul will be able to take off his coat. He'll be able to show how many times he's whipped. He showed the light just on his back. Lord, I was whipped this many times for you. Lord, I was shipwrecked. Lord, I was in peril. Lord, I suffered. But Lord, I'm glad that to be able to report to you that for my sufferings, I can now present to you the city of Rome. And the Roman people will stand up. And the Lord said, I led the Romans to the Lord. When Paul gets through, he said, Now, Lord, I'm glad to report to you, I led the Athens 
And now he come Athens was set up. And Paul would say, Lord, through stripes and through trials and tribulations, I lived after it, after the people to the Lord. The Lord would say, what else did you do, Paul? Paul would turn to the Corinthians. And he said, with much sweat, with much suffering, even though they were superstitious, but I stood on Mars Hill and preached the gospel. And I'm proud to lead to you the Corinthian people to the Lord. Then Paul would step out of the Father. Paul would say, they put me in jail. But while I was in jail, I led the prisoners to the Lord. Hallelujah. He would turn the nation after nation. Tell them how he led to the Lord. And Paul, the Lord would say, Paul, you've fought a good fight. You've kept the faith. You've finished the faith. And now God laid up for you a crown of righteousness. Tell Paul, he, I blessed of the Lord. Paul will walk on away. He'll walk away shining. He'll walk away with a crown. He'll walk away glittering. He'll walk away bright and shining. And you say, ain't Paul pretty? Ain't he bright? Look at Paul. My, he bright. But you standing behind Paul. Then it come time for you to come up there. And the Lord will say, Helena James Ann, report. 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 You will say, Lord, during the time that Brother Crump had that tent, I had to work eight hours a day. <laughs> and I would have got to church on time, but my body was just tired. And Lord, I had a telephone bill to pay. And I had a light bill. And I couldn't help supporting a revival. Don't you understand, Lord? I did the best I could. The Lord would say, go ahead and report my child. Report my child. Well, how many souls did you lead to the Lord? Lord, them people too evil. They, they do mean. All of them smoke. All of them drink. Everybody, nobody wouldn't come to the Lord. Them folks too evil, Lord. Report. Report my child. What about your face like? Lord, every time I face, I try to face, I got a headache. And you, you, you know, my blood pressure ain't just right and Lord, you know, I wasn't born in a strong family, and I just had to eat. You understand, no, Lord. That's the kind of report that y'all will come up with. Well, who did you win to the Lord? That person said, I won nobody to the Lord. And the Lord will say, take that person, bound him up from his head to his toe, cast him into outer darkness. There will be nation and gritting of teeth because you've got nothing to report. The Bible said, go and bring forth much fruit, and that your fruit should remain. Ain't nobody going to come before the Lord empty-handed. Everybody that goes into those gates, they're going to bring some fruit in there with them. Praise the name of the Lord. But Sister Crump, let's go ahead and try to finish that, and we're going to bring it to a close. Read on, Father. You have finished? That passage. And many lay in sackcloth and ashes. And many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it her. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told Esther. Then was the ki queen exceedingly grieved. She was grieved not because of what the devil was doing to the church. She was grieved because of what they was doing to her cousin Mordecai. Read on. And she sent Raymond to clothe Mordecai. Now Mordecai got off his clothes and got on sackcloth and ashes for the church. Esther wants to take the sackcloth and the ashes away from him. She don't see no reason for him to pray and moan and face. And she wants to take those kind of clothes away. Read on. And to take away his sackcloth for him. So she don't want him to moan. But he received it not. He wouldn't do what Esther said do. Then called Esther for her task, one of the king's chamberlains. Then Esther called for one of the chamberlains. Whom he had appointed to attend upon her. Uh-huh. And gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. Now, what's the first one, Sister Crump, she wanted to know? What, what it was. Now, the first thing you got to do is find out what's going on. Esther, find out what was going on. What's and, the next one? And why it was. Esther had to find out why was it going on. Y'all should find out what's going on on this corner. What's happening on this corner? We're having a tent. 
We're having a tip revival. Why are we having it? To get soul saved. Once you find out the real facts behind it, you ought to make a change in your life. Amen. Read on, Sister Crumb. So Hattash went forth to Mordecai unto the street of the city, uh -huh. which, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him. And Mordecai told him everything that happened to him. And of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay and to the Mordecai king. And Mordecai told him how the church was sold. To pay to the king's treasurers for the Jews. To uh -huh. Read on. To destroy them. Also he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan. Mordecai gave him the death order. Gave him the death order for the Jews. Read on. To destroy them. Read on. To show it unto Esther. To show it. To show it unto Esther. With, and to let us see it with our eyeballs. And to declare it unto her. A lot of people can look at someone with eyeballs and don't understand nothing. Now he said, let us see it with eyeballs and then explain it to our brain. That means you're getting it. Read on. And to charge her. And after she done seen it with her eyeballs. And understand it with a brain. Then give her a charge from the Lord. And today, I'm going to share with you what God, God has given you a charge. Y'all stay with me a little while. Don't leave yet. Read on, Father, Sister Graham. That she should go in unto the king. Her job is to go to the king. To make supplication unto him. To go there and pray, go there and plead, go supplication always come with tears. All, supplication always come with a burden. Supplication, all you got to get broken up in your heart to supplicate. Can't nobody supplicate walking around happy go lucky. You can't supplicate with a, a don't care attitude. There ain't many people in the church that supplicate. Most people in the church have never supplicated. Mm -hmm. Praying is one thing, supplicating is another. Anybody can say, Lord, give me this, and Lord, give me that, Lord, give me that. But it ain't the prayer that always get the job done. There's a supplication prayer. Daniel had to supplicate before God. The men of old, they had to learn how to supplicate before God. Before you can get a revival, you got to learn how to supplicate. Sometimes you're a little child, the fever done going up to 105, and the fever's still going up. You just can't ask God to heal your child. You got to supplicate. Sometimes there's a mighty on the oxygen and their breast is almost about to cut off. You can't ask God to heal them. You got to supplicate for God, to God. The church got to learn how to supplicate. So Mordecai asked Esther to go and supplicate. Read on. And to make requests before him for her people. And to make requests to the king for the her people who is the church. Read on. And Hattash came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. And Hattash came and told Esther the words that Mordecai had said. Again, Esther spake unto Hattash and gave him commandment unto uh, Mordecai. Uh-huh. All the king's servants... And, and hear what Esther said? Esther making excuses. You see, y'all want to magnify Esther in every way, but Esther is an excuse maker. <laughs> you look at it close. I know y'all don't want to see it, but it is there and you got to admit it's there. Esther started making excuses. That's right. God can't use no excuse maker. That's the reason why I'd rather be like Mordecai than be like Esther. You, you got to stop making all these excuses. Mm -hmm. Let me ask y'all a question. How many excuses will God accept? None. Suppose you got a wife and you want to go on a honeymoon and stop serving the Lord while you're on your honeymoon. Will God swallow that one? Suppose you done bought some land and you want to go out there and look at your land. Will God swallow that one? Suppose you done bought a piece of ground. Would God swallow that one? No. Suppose you done got sleepy. Would God swallow sleepy? Suppose you done got hungry. Suppose you got nine girls and every, every one of them have got to be combed. Would God swallow that for staying home? Suppose you got an automobile and to get a flat tire. And you live way out in Cherry Hill. You live in East Baltimore. Can you stay home? You got a flat now. Will God swallow that? No, God ain't swallowing that. That's right. Suppose your husband go out and spend all the money. Can you stop serving God? Suppose he beats you up and give you two black eyes. Can you lose your temper and forget about God? 
Well, what can you forget about God for? What justification can you forget about God? What can you lay your legend on the table or on the shelf for? What can you cool down for? What can you back up for and sit down and pick some berries? Is there anything in this earth that will justify you to take it easy? Yes. No, my friend, there ain't nothing will justify you to take it easy. But everybody, Brother Crump, I couldn't do that because of this and I couldn't do that because of that. In time I said, no, brother, there ain't no excuse. You just don't understand. But the Lord understand me. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, my friend. The Lord do not understand that. The Lord understand you, but he ain't understand what you're saying. There is no excuse for not serving the Lord. There is no excuse for not having revival. There is no excuse for not keeping the tent doors open. There is no excuse for not singing on the choir. There is no excuse for not praising the Lord. There is no excuse for not supporting the revival financially. There is no excuse for not putting in prayer and putting in fasting. There is no excuse. Praise the Lord. Read on, Sister Crum. All the king's servants. All the king's servants. And the people of the king's province. And the people of the king's province. Do know that whosoever. Everybody knows. She, in other words, she got a justification. Everybody know that the king ain't called me. Read on. Whether man or woman. Everybody knows whether it's man or woman. Shall come unto the king into the inner court. If you're coming to the king from the inner court. Who is not called. Who is not called. There is one law of his. There is one law of the king. To put him to death. To put him to death. Except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter. Uh-huh. I'm scared he may not hold out to me. Read on. That he may live. Uh-huh. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these 30 days. Mordecai, you sending me to the king, but he ain't called me. And Esther wasn't planning on going. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. And they went back and told Mordecai what Esther said. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther. And Mordecai answers Esther. And it ain't sad and good what he's telling her. Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house. All right. More at, this, at this time, do y'all think Esther thought that she was going to die before Mordecai said that to her? No, she thought that she was going to live. Can anybody tell me why Esther got to die? She got Jewish blood in her bones. How's the king going to know it? How the news get out, y'all? Somebody going to squeal. Have it ever been a time where somebody don't squeal? Them little birds fly in the air. They tell everything. Somebody go go tell the king, your pretty wife is a Jew. And according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, she got to die. So Mordecai, sister, come start the verse over. Mordecai answered Esther. And that's what Mordecai said to Esther. Think, and I'm almost, I'm almost finishing. Think not with thyself. Esther, you think that you're going to live. And the rest of the, wait a minute, sister. You think that you're going to live and the rest of the church going to die. Mordecai, God said, get your little pretty self together. Get your little pretty eyeballs together. Get your little pretty mouth together. And get your little pretty brain to thinking. She's a pretty little thing. But Mordecai told her to think not within herself. Read on. That thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. That you going to live just because you're pretty and just because you're the queen and just because you're in the king's house, don't you think that you're going to live and the rest of the church going to die? Esther still wasn't planning on until she heard Mordecai. Read on, Father. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time... Now, Esther had the right, the authority, shut her mouth and not say nothing. And if she had done that, then she would have left all the Jews unprotected. But read the Father. Then shall their enlargement and deliverance... Now, if Esther, be quiet. Don't say nothing. Don't do nothing. The question is, will the church die? Will the Jews die if Esther don't do nothing? I want you all to think about that and see if you all can answer that. No, the church ain't going to die. And the Jews ain't going to die. Because one monkey don't stop no show. That monkey got to be God. 
God is the only one who can stop a show. The rest of us monkeys don't stop no show. Suppose one person get mad and walk out of the church. Do the church fold up? No. Suppose a whole choir get mad and walk out. Do that change things? No, God ain't going to let the church go down. So God, Mordecai told Esther, if she all together hold her peace at this time, What's the next verse? Then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. What would happen, y'all, if Esther be quiet? But thou... Wait a minute. What would happen to Esther? Did the Jews of Esther be quiet? And what does that mean? God would leave Esther. Holy Ghost would leave Esther. March on across another country. March on somebody else. Esther got the right. She got the authority. She got the opportunity to do something for God. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Ghost will leave her and go someplace else and rise up somebody else. Stir them up. Do y'all believe the Holy Ghost could find somebody someplace to obey? Yes, the Holy Ghost will find somebody someplace that will obey. And I want to tell you this. God has wanted somebody in the city of Baltimore to have a revival. God wants some pastor, some congregation of people that will live holy, that will pray and that will face. He wants somebody that will stand up and have a revival. But you know what you got to do? You got to live right. Mm -hmm. You can't be smoking. You can't be drinking. That's right. You can't be wearing no pants if you're a woman. You can't be wearing no dress if you're a man. You can't be discoing. You can't be going to the movie house. You can't be letting your hair down. God is looking for a church and for a pastor that will be holy. He wants to have a revival in Baltimore. But it looks like God is having a hard time finding it. I can name you some pastors in the city that God, the Holy Ghost, rest up on that pastor and on that church. And they was moving. They was moving. Having, they was getting ready to take the city. They was getting ready to take the city. And all of a sudden, the pastor had a baby by somebody other than his wife. God had to leave that church and go to another. And then I can look at people in the city. After time and time, God have gone to a pastor and gone to a city and said, I give you the city if you just live right and do right. The pastor of the congregation, they let God down. God had to move for another church. And I want to say this to you. God has decided to move our way. God has blessed this church to have a daily radio broadcast. God has blessed this church to have this red and white tent revival. God has blessed this church to be known throughout the city of Baltimore, Maryland. This tent is known abroad. Last year, there wasn't all the family in the city that hadn't heard about Evangelist Eddie of Sutherland and the red and the white gospel tent. But, what will this pastor and this church, what will we do about it? Will we sit back and pick bears? Will we sit back on the shade tree and say, let somebody else do it? Will we stop fasting and praying? Will we stop supporting it financially? What will we do? What will we do? If we won't have revival, the Holy Ghost will move from off us. And he'll go across the railroad track. Maybe across Liberty Heights. Maybe there's some other part of the city and he'll drop on another pastor. He'll drop the burden on another church. He'll keep on until he finds a group of people that will obey. But just as soon as he finds somebody whose heart is perfect toward him, the Bible says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. God is seeking for a man, for a woman, for a church whose heart is perfect toward him. When he finds somebody whose heart is perfect, he'll show himself strong in their behalf. I wonder if we are the people that will obey the Lord. I wonder can God start in Azusa Street revival right under this tent. I wonder do, if do we have Azusa Street praying people. 
God can't start us through the street unless he get us through the street saints. Amen. Ain't that right? He got to get people that will pray like the Azusa Street pray. That's right. Ain't that right? He got to get people that will pray, fast like the Azusa Saints, Saints fast. Are we fit? Are we worthy? Do we qualify for God to have revival? Christian Tipper, do you qualify? The people that's under this red and white gospel tent, do we qualify for God to have revival? Are we worthy for God to have revival? That's the question I want you to deal with. Do we deserve revival? God wants to have revival. God is ready for revival. God going to have revival. Whether it's us or whether it's somebody else, God going to have revival. Let's go a little bit farther, Sister Crump. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. But if you won't do it, Esther, you and your daddy's house go die. And I want to say this to you. I want to say this to my choir members. If y'all don't have revival, y'all going to die and bust hell wide open. I want to say this to the members in this row. If you don't have revival, you're going to die. I want to say it to you in this row. If you don't have revival, you're going to die. You're going to die and you're going to die. And I want to say to the ready audience, those of you that live in Baltimore City, if you don't put on revival, you must die. I want to say to those here in this broadcast in Delaware, if you don't put revival on, you're going to die. I want to talk to the Pennsylvania area. If you don't have revival, you're going to die. I want to talk to the Washington, D.C. area. If you don't have revival, you must die. And even the Virginia area. And all of those that hear my voice, if you don't have revival, you must die. It breaks down to this revival of death. Revival of death. Serve God and win people or die yourself. Get other people out of sin or die yourself. Deliver other people or die yourself. It's one or the other. It brings revival or die yourself. Help somebody or die yourself. That's what it boils down to. We got to have revival or die. Let's go a little bit far, Sister Crumb. And who knows whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? God has raised our church up for this hour. God will raise you up for this hour. Read on. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Esther, after she heard that, she got a little house in order. But she wasn't right until she heard that. Read on. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan. Now she's getting ready to put things on, on the bowl now. But she wasn't right at first. Read on. And fast ye for me. Esther, it took, now she's talking about faith. And at first she was talking about put it, take off the sackcloth. But now she's saying the faith. And neither eat nor drink Don't three eat days. nor drink three days. Night or day. Night or day. I also and my maids will fast likewise. And she wouldn't talk like that at first. And so will I go in unto the king. Uh-huh. Which is not according to the law. Uh-huh. And if I perish, I perish. And that brings us to a close. If God can't use you, he's going to use somebody else. I'm getting ready to make the altar call. God wants to save you, young woman, you young man. But if he can't save you, he'll leave here and go save somebody else. If he got to go to Africa, he's going to save somebody. If nobody in America don't get saved, he'll go to India and save somebody. But you were put here to do a job for the Lord. It's either you or somebody else that gets your crown. Think about it. Which one do you rather? Do you rather that God pass you up and go get somebody else? God going to save somebody. Why, did, why don't you let him save you? God going to use somebody. Why don't you let God use you? If you would like to be saved, will you get up right now and come on up here? I want to pray for you. Anybody in the auditorium who want to be saved, get up right now and come right on up. Anybody who wants to be saved, get up and come right on up. God bless her. Come the young lady. She coming to be saved. Any, anybody else? Anybody else want to join her? Praise the Lord. Amen. I talked with this young lady last night. She she been sitting in this revival quite often. But she had the bella. Praise the Lord. Here come the young man. This young man got a, I think it's a Catholic background. Catholic background. But he's coming to the Lord this morning. It's Brother Blandon's, Brother Blandon's cousin, Brother Blandon's wife, niece or something like that, Brother Blandon? Your niece. Praise the Lord. 
these young people here have been battling to get here. They wanted to get saved last night, but they had to go home and pray. They had to get the strength. They wanted to come up here last night, but they didn't have the strength to come. But this morning, they got up and came. Anybody else got enough strength to get up and come? That's a whosoever will, let him come. Anybody else got enough nerve to walk up here and say, Lord, I give you my life. I know I'm not saved. I know I'm not delivered, but I'm coming home this morning. Anybody else got that much nerve? It takes nerve to do it. Everybody going to look at you when you do it, but you got to be able to do it with everybody looking at you. You got to lay down your cigarette to do it. Your baller got to go. When you do it, you got to go back home and break up all your records. You can't curse no more. You can't fight no more. You can't have no more sex until you get married. Oh, it's a surprise. I ain't telling you. I ain't telling you it's, uh, you ain't got to give nothing. Yeah, you got to give something up. But if you ain't willing to give nothing up, you ain't no good. If you ain't willing to do right, you ain't no good. No way. You need to die and go to hell if you ain't willing to do right. But these two young people, they willing to give something up. 31 years ago, I gave my cigarettes. 31 years ago, I laid my baller down. 31 years ago, I stopped fornicating. 31 years ago, I laid my mess down. And everybody else to say, you laid your mess down. And you ain't fit to go to heaven unless you're willing to lay your stuff down. Anybody else willing to lay the stuff down? You can't go to heaven and carry your stuff with you. The Bible says, whosoever will, let him come. But remember, if you don't come get saved, somebody else going to get it. If you don't go to heaven, somebody else going to If you don't get no star, somebody else going to get it. If you don't get no crime, somebody else going to get it. God going to get somebody. Will you let that person be you? To make it easy for you, I'm going to ask you to stand. And that's the choir to sing a little song. Is there somebody else will come? Thank God two gonna get saved this morning. But can it be three? Can it be four? Can it be five? Anybody else will come to the Lord today? Anybody else will come? Anybody else will come to Jesus today? Jesus, use me. And don't refuse me. There's a work that you can do. Anybody else will come to the Lord this morning? Don't refuse me. There's a work that I can do. the crumble. Oh, yes, there's somebody else want to come. We get ready to pray for these two. Oh, Anybody else want to come? there anybody else who want to come? Think about it a little while. Think about it a little while. Your failure to come up here 
and accept the Lord. It's then the Lord, I don't want you, Lord. I'd rather keep on cursing. I'd rather keep on drinking. I'd rather keep on dancing. And I know if I die right now, I go to hell. But let me go in the hell and burn forever and forever. I love my cigarettes better than I do you. I love my drinking. I love my dancing. Now I ain't coming. Anybody want to come or that's what you want to tell the Lord? Remember, it's not my fault if you don't get saved. I preached the gospel. I made it clear. Anybody who's a sinner in the audience, life's call. This is the very life's call. I'm getting ready to pray for these. If you're coming, you must come now. Is there another? All right. We're going to ask y'all to, if y'all step right up here in the front of me, please. That's right. Watch your pocketbook for them. Praise the Lord. You can come right up. Praise the Lord. I want to say to both of you, you made a wise step. I knew it wasn't easy. I knew you had to battle with your mind, with your thoughts. But you made a wise step. This is the wisest step you've ever made in your life. All you're doing is coming to ask God to forgive you. Then after you ask God to forgive you, you need to get in a church like this one here. Get in a church where the gospel is being told. In fact, I reckon you'd even you work with us after the Lord done saved you. You can't work with a church that ain't teaching this truth and still hold on. But all you got to do right now, in a little while I ask you to close your eyes. This time the enemy will try to get you not to open your mouth. But I want you to open your mouth in a little while and ask the Lord to forgive you for your sins. Promise the Lord you'll live for him the rest of your life. Promise the Lord you'll make him a good soldier. Promise the Lord you won't never make him ashamed of you. Promise the Lord you won't never by his help ever do anything wrong. But you come to him with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. Right now you can bow your head and start praying. I'm going to walk away but you just tell the Lord. Just tell the Lord what you want to tell him. He hear your prayer. I can't pray for you. I can pray for you, but my prayers alone won't do it. My prayers with your prayers will get the job done. They're praying to the Lord now. They're confessing their sins. Both of y'all got to confess your sins. Admit that you're a sinner. Admit to the Lord that you've let him die. But promise the Lord that you're going to serve him the rest of your life. Praise the Lord. Right now, while they're praying, I'm asked to come to get you. You close your eyes and bow your head, and we want to help them pray. Lord, look upon this young man. Look upon this young lady. That have dared to step out of those seats. They have wrestled with the devil. They have wrestled with their own thoughts. The devil thought he had them, but they overcame the devil. They have come up to your altar. Meet them at the altar, Lord. Let your blood be applied to their lives. Wash them. Wash their sins away. Write their name in the Lamb Book of Life. Write their names in the Lamb Book of Life. Touch them by your power. Strengthen them, Lord. Hold them by your hand. Lead them into the path of righteousness. Break the yoke of the devil. Break his grip. Break down his prison door. Loose them right now from the grip and the power of Satan. Untie their hands. Untie their souls. Loose them right now. Endow them with power. Endow them with grace. Endow them with a love for God. Endow them with the word of God. Heal them with your word. Heal them with your word. Heal them with your word. Come into their hearts. Smile upon them. Strengthen them in every area. Found the devil. Write their names in the Lamb Book of Life. Have mercy upon them, Lord. Unloose the shackles from their feet. Take off the heavy weights. Put running in their feet, Lord. Help them right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way right now, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Touch by your mighty power. Touch by your mighty power. 
touch by your mighty power. Touch by your mighty power. Bring deliverance, bring deliverance, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Work a work out in their lives. Work a work out in their lives. Do it for your glory, Lord, and do it for your power. Oh, God, we love you today, Lord. We love you today. We love you today. We love your name. We love your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise it. Here's what I want you to do. Both of these people have asked God to forgive them. And God has forgiven them. And right now I'm going to ask them to clap their hands and thank the Lord. And I want you to do it with them. With both of y'all clap your hands like I mean. And thank the Lord for what he's done. Thank the Lord for what he's done. Thank the Lord for what he's done. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We love you, Lord. We love you. Praise your name. Praise your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now the next step. Once a baby is birthed, that baby has got to find a home. If the baby does not find a home, the bugs and the flies and the dogs will eat the baby up. The devil will get the baby. I have asked these two. Would they like to make this church their church home? Would they like to unite with this church? Both of them told me they would like to unite with this church. Praise the Lord. With that in mind, I'm opening the doors of the church. All of you that would like to come and unite with this church, let it be known by stepping out your seat and coming on up here now. Here come Brother Carl. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Somebody go help us. Somebody need business. Anybody else want to come? Anybody else want to come to United Methodist Church? Whosoever will may come. Whosoever will. Anybody else? Anybody else? Amen. All three of these pe- people are young people. And they know what I stand for. They know that I stand for the truth. They know it can't be no drinking, no smoking, no discoing, and no kind of nothing. They ain't right. Because they know what this church stands for. Some of these people come out of different churches. I think Brother Carl comes up from a Methodist church. The young man comes up from a Catholic church. And I think the young lady comes up from a Baptist church. But they want holiness. They know you got to be holy. They weren't getting what they wanted. They weren't getting what they were looking for. So they've come over here to the Lord's house. Where we teach holiness. Don't smoke, don't drink. Don't curse. Don't fornicate. We live right over here. And these... Three young people want to be united with this church. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to ask some of our young people. Amen. Some of the young people to come on up. And we're going to ask our young men, our young people choir, to 
Dave, come on up here. And I want, after I shake their hands, I want y'all to come by and shake these young people's hands. And I want y'all to welcome into this church. Tell them you love them. Hug them and kiss them. Praise the Lord and welcome. Give them the right hand of fellowship. Let's have the song. He gave me what I wanted. He gave me what I wanted. He gave me what I wanted. I'm the Lord. Oh, he gave me what I wanted. He gave me what I wanted. Oh, he gave me what I wanted. I'm the Lord. Oh, he gave me what I wanted. in age, but if you feel young and want to come, just come on anyway. If you just want to come, come on anyway and check the end. Well, now y'all go make sure. He gave me what I wanted. He gave me what I wanted. Oh, he gave me what I wanted. 